Welcome, everybody. RSG Hockey and RSG Wealth presents Life After Hockey. Today's guest, Jake Allen of the St. Louis Blues. Thanks so much for carving out a little bit of your time today to talk with us about Program 34. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me, Mike. Great to see you again. You've accomplished an awful lot in life since we were teammates with the Peoria Rivermen years ago, uh, much more than I have. You're now a Stanley Cup champion. Congratulations to you on all your success. And then on top of that, your charitable endeavors, which we're going to talk about today. So um, first, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, appreciate it. And then secondly here, let's talk about Program 34 a little bit. If you could give a little introduction to it, uh, how it got started, where it's based, everything you've put into it. Yeah, so Program 34 is a nonprofit organization. Uh, I mean, my wife started back in 2015. Uh, we're based out of Fredericton, New Brunswick in Canada, my hometown. And, um, you know, I'm from a province where, you know, we're very tiny. There's not, uh, there's, they don't produce a whole lot of hockey players. And, you know, when I got to the NHL, I thought I got to find a way to give back. And this is what I wanted to do. I reached out to a few people in our community and they set me up with the right connections and uh, we created Program 34. So, uh, it's a nonprofit organization that gives back to local businesses, nonprofits, uh, minor minor sport programs. Um, you know, trying to make uh, make ends meet for uh, organizations that may need it or for kids that may need it. And you know, we've benefited over 15 different organizations uh, so far in our in our area. And you know, we've uh, it's it's really been a, a a neat experience. You know, to be able to give back, but obviously learn you know, some of the business side of things uh, that go on behind it. You know, it's a lot of work that, that goes on. So uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a great five years so far. I mean, you started this when you were 25 years old, and that's pretty young. Was it something that you'd always had in your mind that, you know, if you got to the level that you could help out, give back, that you would do so? And then when you started to get the ball rolling for this, who was in your corner to really help out and get things started? Yeah, you know, it, it's always in the back of my mind. Obviously, you look up to the right people. Um, and most of the, you always want to surround yourself with good people. And I found the people that I surrounded myself with or looked up to always sort of did something on this kind of level. And, you know, when I, when I got to the NHL full time, I said, you know, this is the time to do it. And, you know, I reached out to, uh, actually my uncle first and, uh, back home and uh, he connected me with a few other people. And I, I also talked to players who've done it in the past too, older players in the blues and, uh, just sort of pick people's brains and, and where I should go. And, and like I said, you, you have to have the right people around you to make things work. And, you know, it, it really just blossomed. It, it was a lot, it was, it was probably six to eight months in the process of getting, you know, the legal aspects of it, it done, but uh, it was well worth the time and the effort. And uh, that's where it sort of started. The mission statement's great, you know, to reduce and eliminate barriers in participation caused by poverty, distance, disability, and culture that's pretty all encompassing. You know, how did you come to the conclusion that that's really where you wanted to drive your charity towards? Yeah. You know, me and my wife, uh, sat down and with our committee, we have a committee who, uh, runs the nonprofit. Um, you know, when we sort of brainstormed what we wanted our mission statement to be, and, you know, we tried to hit every aspect of it. And obviously in that statement, it's very diverse and, you know, reaches a lot of, a lot of different, uh, you know, things, but, uh, we really just didn't want to generate. It was going to one fund all the time, whether it be a minor hockey program the whole time we wanted to really branch out. Um, I felt we had the opportunity to do that, especially in our local community. And, you know, we've hit, uh, so many different organizations from, you know, uh, hospitals to Alzheimer's foundations to minor sports programs to, you know, people with disabilities, uh, sled hockey, things like that. So, we really try to hit home with this and make the most of it. It's a big process to get this started. I'm curious what it took to get it off the ground uh, in terms of like the legal framework you said and finding the right people and, you know, ultimately setting yourself up for something with life after hockey that you can leave a legacy towards. Yeah. You know, like I said, surrounding yourself with the right people. And just, I, I talked a lot to a lot of different people who've started things like this. Um, and, you know, Finally, when I had an understanding of what it took to get it done, I reached out to a few people, told them what my goal was, uh, what direction I wanted to go. And, you know, fortunately for me, I've had good people in my corner and make it happen. And, you know, you have to go to the you know, provincial government, uh, get approved, you know, have to have a committee, 
uh, obviously a lawyer on your side to, uh, to make all the ends meet, an accountant as well. So, you know, we've had great people that help, especially when it's a nonprofit, um, you know, people that are behind what we're doing. I think that's the biggest thing. You need to have people support what you're doing and have a passion for it. So, um, yeah, it was a six to eight months process uh, in back in New Brunswick and, you know, some fees here and there, but it, uh, it all made it worth it. And uh, it was interesting. Like I said, it was for me just learning some things on, along the way of legal aspects and, you know, going through this whole thing. It's opened my eyes to a lot of things, which has been interesting. Do you think the stuff that you've learned doing this could potentially transfer over into post hockey playing career, whether it's just with your charity or with other things in the work world? Um, you never know. I don't know what's going to be hold for a post hockey career when I get too old to play anymore, but, uh, it's just, I've learned so many things, you know, it, as everyone has, as you mature, but, in, and you know, Mike, like in this hockey world, as you start off as a young kid, you just learn and learn and learn. And it's not just hockey, it's life itself. And I think adding all these things into the piece just makes you more mature and understanding, um, of so many, you know, different things in life. So, uh, it, it potentially could maybe maybe have a leeway down the road where, oh, I've done this before, I've done that. But just dealing with some legal stuff, uh, accounting, uh, how to create a solid you know foundation, not quite a business, but uh, just little things that, that you learn is definitely going to be helpful. Yeah, the nice part about these things is that you're doing this to give back. It's a completely selfless endeavor. But, you know, the, the thing that goes along with it, too, is that you do learn an awful lot and it transfers over for yourself, too. You know, so it's not a selfish thing at all. You learn so much and you're able to grow. Has it at times been a nice distraction to have something to look at and do besides just playing and to think about during the season? Yeah, for sure. I, I honestly, I've, I've said that a lot and you nailed it right there. Like me and my wife, once we generally hold our event in August, late July, depending on the year, but um, you know, take a couple months off, tie up all the loose ends from that event. And then come October, November, we slowly start to pick at the, the following year's event and what we can do better, where we can improve. Um, sort of gives you something outside of hockey, like you said, to, to really focus on and strive to have a really solid event. You know, you have six to eight months during the hockey year to slowly pick away at it. So you're ahead of the game. And um, yeah, I love having things to do outside of the game. So this definitely helps. Look at the numbers here. You know, you've raised over $330,000 in four events. Uh, ultimate goal going forward, I'm sure, is to do more than that. Is it more than just money, though? You know, when you go and you give back to your community, whether it's with hockey equipment that's been helped out by the NHLPA at times, uh, where do you really see the most benefit within your community? Yeah, no question. And they're definitely proud of that number. And uh, obviously, you want to go up from there. But um, we have a very small community, uh, just like the hockey community here in St. Louis. You know, it's tight knit. But uh, we've had the same people in our tournament since the first year. Uh, it, we've had such great support and they support what we're doing and be able to obviously give the, the money back to these charities and, and see what they can accomplish with that, with that, uh, with those fun, with those funds and um, trying to take their charity and organizations to the next level. And um, just to see the smile on their face and, and, and really we've seen some great results from, from the few things that we've done and, so just some great feedback and knowing that you're actually doing a really positive thing in our community uh, in province. So it's, uh, those are the rewarding things, you know, the money's obviously great, but uh, that's from all our sponsors and our patrons at play, but uh, it's really seeing these, uh, you know, funds go and actually have benefits towards it and, and seeing it firsthand. You've had some pretty big golf tournaments that have driven a lot of this revenue and, and a lot of players and, and coaches and people that have come in to play in it. How have you gone about that process, uh, inviting people, having them show up? Uh, I, I'm guessing it's not an easy trek to New Brunswick necessarily, but apparently it's worth it because you've had some big names show up to play in the tournament. Yeah, you know, we've been very fortunate. You know, in the first couple of years, we had uh, obviously a lot of our Blues players and a lot of players that have played with in the past come. And, and like you said, summer's a, so short for hockey, for a hockey player, and you never want to bug them. And um, it's, so sometimes it's tough to ask. But, uh, no, we've had great, uh, great support and attendance from a lot of players, you know, over 30 players and alumni over the years and some you know, big-name coaches. We've had Mike Babcock come in when he was the head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs and uh, Claude Julian as well. And uh, New Brunswick's a 
a majority Leafs, Habs, Bruins, uh, Bruins crowd. So those two names were, were big draws and um, tried to do a little bit extra when they were around be- because of uh, who they were at the time. And, um, you know, we've been very fortunate. It's, you know, so many events, people ask you to go here and there, here and there. And I hate asking the guys, but the guys have been great and uh, looking forward to more. Was there anybody surprising that showed up could absolutely stripe the ball? You know, a lot of hockey players are pretty good golfers, but... Uh, I'm not included in that group, and you know that. <laughs> um, I don't know. Well, Panger came up once, and he's a... Everyone knows he's a stick. He's a real good golfer. I hear he's got a pretty good iron game. Yeah, he's, uh, he's been pretty consistent right down the middle, right on the green. If he's around the green, he's up and down for par every time. So he's, uh, you know, a great, uh, great golfer. He came up and hosted the event one year. And, um, you know, other than that, Pang is probably the best stick that we brought in. Thinking about your post-playing career, uh, I know we already touched a little bit on it, how this is something I'm sure you'd like to keep going, but what are the long-term goals for Program 34? Yeah, obviously to c- keep continue it as long as I am playing. Um, and then after, it's, uh, we'll have to sit down and look look what's the, what's the best, best option. You know, we've talked about – Maybe potentially when I'm done moving on from a golf tournament and doing something more locally, maybe a couple of dinners, um, you know, a couple of dinners with some auctions, some entertainment, as obviously I'll have more time during the winters and, and things like that. So program 34 is going to stick with myself and my wife as long as I'm you know, still playing. And then once I'm done, we'll sit down and reassess where we are and, and what the best option is. So we're going to continue to try to raise as much money for our area and, and, uh, and go from there. So it's, uh, it's at an all time high. And obviously this year with uh, COVID we had to uh, postpone. Uh, so we'll be back and uh, back at it in 2021. With as much as you've learned starting at 25 years old, getting an entire charity off the ground, what type of advice would you have for other players looking to do something like this during career post playing? You know, I, I'd say go for it because we're on a pedestal for a very short amount of time until we get too old to play. And, um, I think you got to use that. You have to use the opportunities that you have, the connections that you have, the people around you. And like I said, you you really want to support yourself with the right people and have the right people in your back pocket. And um, if if you really get into it and you really want to do it and you really work hard at it, it, it doesn't even seem like work. It's uh, it's you know a few meetings here and there, a few documents here and there, and next thing you know, it's off and running. And like I said, if you have the right people that, that help you out with it on your committee, then it really makes it easy. And it's just a simple thing to give back. And it, it's fun. You need to have a passion for it. I think that's my biggest thing is uh, I'm not going to commit to anything post-career unless I really have an interest and a passion for it. And uh, this is something I do. So, um, yeah. So I, I say jump at it. It's a great opportunity to, to learn some things and give back. It's been fun talking about it. I've learned more about Program 34 just sitting with you here. But um, you know, you've done this long enough now that you've learned so much with it. Uh, do you see it be able to, to kind of like go throughout the locker room that it creates that contagious feeling where players want to be involved in something like this? Yeah. You know, in St. Louis, it's great here. Obviously the blues give us a lot of options to, to have our own, uh, either charitable cause through the team. Um, I do a program 34 here in St. Louis with so the blues, you know, some guys, uh, uh, bring uh, kids into a suite every game. Uh, each each guy is their own thing, but uh, I try to connect it here with the Blues and uh, bring. Uh, you know, last year I brought uh, officers and first responders to games, tickets, meals, food, all that stuff. And a uh, year before I did Boys and Girls Club of Missouri, uh, did that type of stuff. So I think the, here in St. Louis during the season they give you many options, so they're so open. If if you want to come to them with an idea, and say hey. I'd like to do this or I'd like to do that. Um, they are so willing to do it. It's been great. So I think there's a lot of guys in our team that do that. And I think the younger guys, as years go on, they take notice and, and those jump at it too. But um, yeah, so I, I think we have a great group of uh, guys of, of charitable hearts, I guess you want to say, and want to give back. But uh, I think as you get older, you really understand what's important. We still have a lot of young guys in our team and I'm sure they'll jump into those shoes. If somebody wants to help out with Program 34, where can they find you? Uh, we have a website called uh, jakeallengolf.ca, um, and you can go on there, and anything you want, you uh, can send an email. 
and a person on our committee runs our website and answers all the questions um, from that uh, that aspect of it. So if you want to go to that website and you have any questions, uh, the, the email will be directed to them. But don't slide into your DMs. No, do not slide into my DMs. <laughs> All right. This has been great. Hey, Jake, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, it's great talking program 34 and hopefully we get the season started. See you on the ice again. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks Mike.